Hello everyone, Carl here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Life, GBHBL.com for short. Hope you had a lovely weekend. It is Monday the 19th of April. It's bright and sunny out, got some natural light coming in. Couple of weeks off work, so plenty of time basically to buckle down and do a ton of site stuff from written articles to videos starting today with this a news update selection of items I've taken and we're going to run through right now and we begin with Love Bites news I love Love Bites one of the most important Japanese heavy metal bands releasing their thunderous new EP Glory Glory to the World in the UK on CD and vinyl from the 28th of May 2021 from JPU Records it is an extended EP featuring the award winning band's first theme song from an anime as a bonus track and this will be the first time the Love Bites EP has been set to vinyl in the entire world. The new EP was already released digitally worldwide and in metal charts around the world including all five tracks taking the top five positions of iTunes, Japan's, Japan's metal song rankings. All five tracks were recorded under the darkness of you know what this pandemic including the bonus track Winds of Transylvania. The theme song to the vampiric anime Vlad Love from visionary directors Mamamo Oshi and Junji Nishimuru, Ghost in the Shell, Yurasi Yatsura. I'm not up on my anime. If you are, I guess that's going to mean a lot more to you. Uh, iconic director Marumo Oshuri actually commented saying, when I happen to see a Love Bites music video, I can immediately see parallels between the five members and the main character of Vlad Love. They're like a heretic of heavy metal, wearing bright white outfits while playing intense music. They're the perfect choice to take charge of a theme song to an anime not bound by convention or common sense. And above all, their name couldn't be more fitting. Which is a fair summation, I think. Midori of Love Bites comments, though. Although it's the opening for the anime, real us appear in it. As well as some animated characters performing instead of us, doing as we do. We didn't use motion capture, actually. The production team filled our performances and animate the characters to reflect our movements. We had no idea what it would look like at the time, but look what it has become. Our performances and instruments are reproduced accurately. It is so cool. So clearly they're quite taken with this anime version of themselves. And on creating the EP, Love Bites comments, on one hand, working on this album during the spread of coronavirus has been mentally draining. On the other, the music created in such darkness has managed to become full of feelings of salvation and light. This body of work is full of a positive power unlike anything else in the history of Love Bites. Now I've checked out the EP already. It's Love Bites. You kind of know what you're getting with at this stage. I don't think they're going to be changing making any major change ups to their sound anytime soon. It's heavy, it's thrashy, it's eclectic, it's unique. They're visually uh, an awesome band to watch but musically as well without the visual sight of them. They sound great too. It is one of those that it constantly surprise you. If you've never seen or heard Love Bites before and you just took one look at the image of them, you're instantly like, oh, okay, uh, I'm expecting, you're expecting J-pop, rock, that kind of thing. Maybe something in the vein of baby metal, but not with Love Bites at all. Far heavier, far more intense band. Certainly grabbed my attention. I went to see them a few years ago at the Islington Academy in London, Angel. And uh, they were awesome, awesome there. And of course at Bloodstock as well where they played the main stage. So I'm a big fan of Love Bites, and this is an EP well worth checking out, particularly as you're going to be able to get it on vinyl. We now go to the Day of the Beast, where Prosthetic Records have announced the signing of the band and unveil the release of their upcoming fourth full-length album, Indisputably Carnivorous, due for release on June 18th, 2021. The album is blackened, riff-heavy death metal at its most extreme, and it's here to sour your summer. Accompanying the album announcement, The Day of the Beast also released the lead single, Disturbing Roars at Twilight. So if you want a taste of what these guys sound like, what you can expect from the album, go check out that right now via Spotify, Apple Music, Bandcamp, and of course you can now pre-order the upcoming album. And speaking on the signing announcement, the band comments, we've always had much respect for Prosthetic Records, who are one of my favorite labels out there. That's my quote, not theirs. And the impact they've had in the world of extreme metal. We are incredibly honored and proud to be part of the roster. On the single release, the band adds, this is one of the faster, more melodic tracks on the, on the record. Lyrically, the song is themed around the Lovecraft short horror story, The Haunter of the Dark, which is a, a, a fantastic inspiration, I think, 
uh, from Lovecraftian work. People tend to focus on certain ones over others, so to see that come out is awesome news. It's dripping with pure aggression and channeling evil through all inputs. Indisputably carnivorous is the soundtrack to every raging nightmare brought to life, shining a light on the darkest, filthiest corners of the human psyche by way of apocalyptic horror-inspired storytelling. The Day of the Beast have created a monster. Each track revolves around its own specific tale or theme, with inspiration coming from the likes of Clive Barker, Bram Stoker, and of course, H.P. Lovecraft. The album name is taken from the Graham Masterson novel, The well Wells of Hell, and the title track is primarily based upon that book. Recorded August to October 2020 in Hampton Roads, Virginia, with the band overseeing all elements of recording the meat of the album themselves. They then enlisted Tony Petroselli of Trepian Studios to track vocals. The album was mixed and mastered by Zach Orion at Castle Ultimate Studios. Take control of production themselves allowed the band, which features Steve Redman from fellow prosthetic signees for Token, to set their own pace. They took the time to look back past over their past output, cherry picking the elements they rated the most and bring them together in one cohesive rager of an album. The result is a whiplash inducing thrash via death metal record, celebrating the legacy of the genre while adding their own indisputably bloodthirsty, indisputably abdominable carnivorous spin on it. Indisputably carnivor carn carnivorous is due for release via Prosthetic Records on June 18th, 2021. So not too long to wait for that. Now we go to Blood Red Hourglass. The Finnish melodic death metalers have released a new single, Veritas. This is the second taster of the band's upcoming new album, which is due for release later this year via Out of Line Music. The band comments, when the pre-production of the album was almost finished, Eero, guitarist, got the idea of making a song with absolutely no holds barred. All the parts were composed in one rush of inspiration. Veritaris carries a ton of intensity with its adrenaline-filled riff and super fast pace. And it really is a straightforward raging roller coaster like nothing we've done before. Lyrically, it is very much a temptation for fairy tale all gone down too well. So mm, that's a great description there. On the new album, the band continues. We were in a new situation since the songwriting responsibility was divided due to member changes after the previous album. Overall, we wanted to create something that's completely new and fresh for us, but also maintain the familiar blood red hourglass sound. We're really happy with the results on the final record, and it's safe to say the end result was more than we, and hopefully all of you, even expected. Blood Red Hourglass's new album is expected to be a, a melodic death metal roller coaster, they've said as much themselves, with an epic feel and a very modern approach. Musically, it's the most diverse Blood Red Hourglass album we've created. It contains a slower song ever, but also the most aggressive headbanger too. It's filled with sadness and joy and brutality and catchiness, a perfect mellow death roller coaster, just the way we wanted it to be, and that came from the guitarist Laurie Silvonian. Previous album Godsend saw Blood Red Hourglass climb towards the top of the Finnish metal scene with their signature blend of melodic death and thrash metal. Stay tuned for more details of the band's upcoming album, which will be very, very soon, no doubt. And we wrap up this news video with Fear Factory related stuff. The industrial tinged extreme metal pioneers are proud to announce that the 10th studio album Aggression Continuum will be released on June 18th via Nuclear Blast, just in time for the band's 30th anniversary. Now Fear Factory have offered fans the first preview of the album with a music video for Disruptor. Dina Kazari's comments, this record is one of my proudest achievements and I'm really excited for it to be finally released. There were a lot of personal struggles, sacrifices and of course legal issues involved with this record which almost didn't see the light of day but through passion determination lots of hard work and not giving up the fight it's finally ready for the world to hear i felt that i needed to prove myself once again as i always try and make each record better than the last listen and understand this album is pissed it can't be bargained with it can't be reasoned with it doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear and it absolutely will not stop ever until you are hooked you must fight to survive in the aggression continuum. Aggression Continuum features guitarist, 
songwriter, and of course co-founder Dino Cazares, drummer Mike Heller, and former vocalist, and that's the important word there now, former vocalist, lyricist, and co-founder Burton C. Bell. Fear Factory's records are cinematic in scope, we know this. Sonic landscapes, dystopian post-apocalyptic futures found in classic sci-fi literature and films from Ray Bradbury to Blade Runner. Aggression Continuum, the 10th studio album, is the culmination of three decades of unforgettable songs, performances, and forward-thinking storytelling concepts, while simultaneously rebooting Fear Factory onto a brilliant and excitingly unpredictable new path, like the liquid metal T-1000 in the Terminator franchise, or the Academy Award-winning reboot of Mad Max. Aggression Continuum is a turning point where what was transforms into what will be. It is Fear Factory's own Fury Road. I am, I am excited about this, purely because it's been such a long time, and whether we like it or not, Burton C. Bell is not going to be in Fear Factory going forward, so this effectively is his swan song. And it's one of those where it's like, we could have something incredible here, and we could also see where the future I guess is is for Fear Factory. There is another part of me that's incredibly worried and uh, not entirely sure how on board I'm gonna be without Burton in Fear Factory, but we will see when the album is released. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?